my name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about gluten sensitivity, or perhaps what's not gluten sensitivity. About three years ago, a group from Australia published a very interesting paper um, suggesting that there was indeed non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And they did this in a group of volunteers who were people who had reported benefit of their symptoms. Many of those symptoms were symptoms similar to irritable bowel syndrome. They took those patients into their unit, made sure they didn't have celiac disease, and then put them on a double-blind placebo-controlled challenge with gluten. So the patients nor the investigators knew who was getting gluten and who was not. And when that report came out, it caused somewhat of a sensation because it showed that people could indeed get symptoms from gluten that was not predicted by any of the usual factors that would predict celiac disease. So this started a, or almost a confl conflagration of interest in non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And soon virtually everything was being blamed on gluten. Well, the story continues and the same research group undertook a similar but somewhat more detailed study that came out last year. And in this study, they again recruited people who had symptoms like IBS, who had reported benefit from going gluten-free. This time they did the study a little differently. Before they started the challenge, they restricted the patient's intake of FODMAPs. Now, what the heck are FODMAPs? FODMAPs are components of foods that have very peculiar properties. They're small sugars or small alcohols, they're fermentable, and they have osmotic properties, meaning they can act like a laxative. So they restricted these patients' intake of FODMAPs for a couple of weeks, and during that couple of weeks, interesting thing happened. Any of their residual symptoms that they had went away. But even more shocking was when they challenged them with gluten, as they had done in a previous the previous study, well, what happened was nothing predictable. The patients did not get symptoms in response to gluten. So they didn't really believe it, so they tried it again, this time making their diet even more restrictive and more carefully challenging with gluten. And again, they were not able to predict symptoms from gluten. So what does all this mean? Well, this means that perhaps a lot of the people we thought were gluten sensitive who went on a gluten-free diet and felt better, maybe it isn't the gluten, which is only one part of wheat. And these researchers suggest it might be fructans, which are a component of wheat that act like a FODMAP, one of those laxative-like um, components of foods. So perhaps this one cause or one group of people we thought had non-celiac gluten sensitivity really have a form of wheat intolerance due to the fructan content of the wheat. Of course, a lot more research is going to be done in order to try and figure out how much of a role and precisely what in wheat produces symptoms. Now, what does it matter to patients? Well, if you feel better by avoiding wheat for whatever the reason, well, that's wonderful. We should never argue with success. It's still important to know if you have celiac disease. Because if the patient has celiac disease, we know there's chronic inflammation in the intestine and there can be complications of it. So we need to find that out before you go gluten-free. Thank you.